here we are. We have UFC 300, and I want to talk about it, but before I do, I just want to invite everybody, and Hill, if you count that as an upset, had to pick an upset. Oh, yeah, pick upsets all day, man. Um, you know, you're picking your winners. We ain't mad at you. We still have 18 slots left for a $10 buy-in on the DFS 300. Um, one thing I need to do is keep my OBS in the corner. I'm going to get rid of that. Give me a second here. I'll be in chat. Um, acknowledge your tribal chief. I, I, you've been watching too much Vikings, bro. Stop watching reruns of shows on Netflix. It's a waste of time. All you trolls. Just, just stop it. Just stop it. Uh, thanks for being here, guys. We are going to talk UFC 300. It starts in about two hours. I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. One reason I'm on live stream, though, is because I want people to understand that we still have slots open for the DFS competition. We need it to get full. So we need 50 slots to fill up. We're sitting at 18. I've been sitting here all day just staring at this number wondering, are we going to get there? We're at 19 now. Okay, we need 31 more people to sign up. 31 in about an hour and a half that puts me at one person every three minutes so we need one of you guys out there watching this live to sign up for the dfs competition on DraftKings. if you want to know how to get there all you have to do it's in the description of this video it's on twitter homepage it's on patreon homepage it's on the discord server you just click on the link and say i want to compete for the daily fantasy sports competition with rico knows what you're doing is you're entering a 50 entrant competition there are only 50 people in the contest top five will be getting paid if we don't fill up in time you will all get your money back it's a no risk factor at that point but what you're doing is you're picking six winners for tonight at ufc 300 we have an amazing card you have to pick the winners for ufc 300 or at least guess at who's going to win the fights and who's going to do the best it's a different scoring system than you're used to it's about takedown significant strikes how fast do they win the fight does it go to decision is it a tko is it a submission all that stuff comes into play. You have to pick people who are statistically great, uh, scoring quote-unquote fantasy points. I hope you guys pay attention to stuff like that, and I hope you give it a shot. Um, it's exciting for me because obviously I've given a 1,000 people the MVPs out there. I've given them all my predictions on these fights or at least my assessment on what's a good bet and what's a, you know, what's a decision that you should be making. But at the same time, I haven't... Uh, told them who I'm picking for my DraftKings lineup, my DFS lineup. I wouldn't dare give that away. They don't get that kind of information for free, or even if they pay. That's private to me because I want to win. Uh, I got people on the Discord server right now talking. I need to make sure. Don't forget to sign up for the DraftKings Hunter competition, y'all. Thank you very much, Prod Self. I appreciate you. You are the man. That's fire. I'm going to actually get into the stage right now. I think if I'm on the stage, I can start the stage and show you guys my second screen, but I can't show you uh, the fights just yet. I can't show you my face. UFC 300, I'm starting the stage now. More MVPs will join. I want to talk to the MVPs because I know those guys have $10 that they're willing to bet. Uh, just give me a second and we will make it work. I'm sharing screen two. I will go live. I hope they can hear my audio as well. We're here. What I'm going to do for the MVPs is something I can't do on YouTube, unfortunately. So I can't actually do it. I wanted to show you guys episodes of Embedded. I don't know if you guys have been watching the fights on Embedded. Can you guys hear me on the Discord server, by the way? If you guys can just let me know in the chat, uh, that'd be pretty cool. We're going to be doing... Yes, you can hear me. Awesome. Give me a second here. I want to get this shareable link. Uh, when you go into edit your lineup... Let me take this off the page. Oh no, we can't show that either. Oh no, let me do this. You go to share link, link copied. Let me go back. Don't worry, my lineup will change. You guys can't mess with me. Uh, I'm giving you guys the link to the competition. So there's the link to the competition for all the MVPs. If you didn't know, it is a top 50 uh, entrance lineup. We're still at 19. We need more people to, to sign up. It's only $10. First place, we'll be getting over $100. Second place, over $100. It pays out the top five people. So you have a 10% chance of winning. 
and it's a ten dollar bet. You can't hit a ten. You cannot get a ten percent chance to hit a ten dollar bet and make it a hundred dollars. That's like hitting a plus one thousand. You can't hear me now. You should be able to hear me, Prod. Can everybody else hear me? You should be able to hear me. Don't do that to me now. Uh, my microphone's on. I look like I'm bouncing over here. Good. MVPs, please chime in on the Discord server and let me know if you can hear me or not. Is that just a prod thing or is that everybody thing? Thank you very much, Brian. I appreciate you. So, yeah, guys, we have we have UFC. Uh, thank you so much, Pittsburgh. I, you're, you're the man, JP. And Boston still sucks it. Prod self needs to fix himself. He's still prod self and Marcel. I know we're here early, guys. We're here two hours early. Some of you guys are like, what the hell are we doing here two hours early? Well, seats are going to be limited, just so we're clear. We do have a stage on the Discord server where we talk and watch the fights together. We ready up in here. Shout out to Step Back, one of my MVPs, an annual MVP. I appreciate you. If you guys don't know, it's tough in the offseason. I worry about losing MVPs during the offseason. Worry about losing subscribers. Something's been really cool over the last two months. We have gone up in numbers. We have stayed afloat. We are gaining more than we're losing. It's remarkable because I had such a huge exodus after the football season. People just assumed we weren't going to know any other sports after football. And I told you guys, we're going to know other sports. We're going to do something fun and, and energetic. And one of the craziest things uh, is that... I told you we will watch the fights and do them together on the Discord server, on ESPN+. Plus. You know, pay-per-views, no problem. And you guys, some people listening, some didn't. Shout out to Junior7. Thank you so much. You can't hear on Cord. Everybody can hear me on Discord, Mar. They already told me they can. You got to fix your Discord server. They've, they've already told me in the chat. Uh, but Juror7... Jur is that your junior seven just joined the competition on DraftKings? We're sitting at 19 out of 50. I hit refresh. Let's see what we get. It's coming. Pause. We're now at 20. We need one every every three minutes. We need somebody new. We, we need 30 new people for this competition. It is a $10 buy-in. Show up and we're gonna make it happen. It's not hard. You go to daily fantasy sports. Uh, for DraftKings, you can do it on your phone or on your desktop. Just go to Fantasy DraftKings, click on the Fantasy tab. It's your fantasy world, bro. We just live in it, okay? Um, one thing I want to talk about as, as we look at these matchups, the very first fight of the night is two former world champs. So we're starting the early prelims. We're going to be in a long grind. This means I have to talk, provide commentary for six hours straight, which is nuts because I got to do two hours i'm going to be doing this for the next two hours and then we're going to be on and we got to go all the way to midnight all the way to 2 a.m however long these fights last remember we have three main event fights going five rounds five rounds for three different fights this is ridiculous one of them being two women and we know the women go long because ain't nobody getting knocked out i'm just saying shout out to jt he says we're ready jt we can't hear now no it changed we can't hear now mar they can hear. I'm watching my mic levels. They can hear. Something's wrong on your end. Something's wrong on your end. Kelly Johnson, you said hello again. Do you remember me? Kelly Johnson, I do not have an effing clue who you are. You have never talked to me in your life. You are talking to scammers who pretend to be me. We have never corresponded. You understand? We have never corresponded. You have been talking to African scammers using my pictures. I don't know you. I've never known you. I never loved you. I never talked to you. You're a damn stranger to me. Please don't come into my chat saying, do you remember me now? And you, no. The answer is no. My dog's pissed. Okay. My dog don't know you. You don't know my dog. We never knew each other. Not in a past life. Not in this life. Not ever. Yes. African scammers use my photos to defraud women all over the world. Get used to it. All right, I'm not loaded on Dr. Pepper. I'm on a natural high. I want to tell you guys something I'm doing different today. While in preparation for this, I was like, all right, I'm going to make some content. Not really. I was working on the transfer portal stuff, and I did a transfer portal episode last night. But while I was waiting for this to happen today, I was sitting there with my record button. You guys don't know this. I don't know how many of you guys saw. I did a 30-minute block, um, block on the radio for a New Jersey radio station, uh, FM am radio station and online oh well sorry no reason to be mean cheese yes there is a reason to be mean you just walked up to me and said hey remember me and i'm like step off because i don't remember you kelly johnson we don't know each other 
We're not cool. I'm not a nice person. You don't know me. You don't know my personality. I don't give to the homeless. I'm not trying to raise all these orphan kids. I don't adopt puppies. You don't know me. I'm not a nice guy. I'm a world-class ass kicker. I'm a retired first sergeant. We don't know each other. I'm not a nice guy. I ain't want to hold your hand. I never once called you baby. I don't love you. I don't give you kisses good night before you go to sleep. I don't fucking like long watches on the beach. I don't like poetry or fucking chick flicks. We don't know each other. So don't walk in here and talk like you know me. Like that's crazy. Man, I can't stand this shit, bro. People need to say, what do you mean what the hell? That's right, what the hell? Your response is what the hell? Your response is what the hell? What do you think my response is to a stranger walking up to me and going, hey, remember me? I, we used to talk. No, we didn't. You talked to some dude named Marcus or Jamal or Zimbabwe or Chickenagua or some other shit I can't pronounce. You talked to somebody from some other African nation who used my pictures and you fell for it. So if you fell for a scammer, how in the hell do we have anything to talk about? We got nothing in common. My intellect level's through the roof. We can't have a conversation. You're so gullible and naive, you fell for some shit. Do me a favor, ma'am. Do me a favor. Look in the mirror and then look at me. And just let me know if we're equivalent, okay? I make over $300,000 a year. What do you do? How are you catching me? How are we crossing paths in life? I'm college educated, are you? Let me know. I need to know how you absolutely not. You are absolutely not educated. Let me tell you something, Kelly Johnson. Kelly Johnson, let me say something to you. And I mean this. Kelly Johnson, who is your ex-boyfriend? I need to know who your ex-boyfriend is. And I need to know who your ex-husband or ex-boyfriend is and does he look like me? Is he muscles? Is he tattoos? Is he crazy successful? Is he funny? Is he charismatic? Can he dance? I need to know. I need to know what you think you elevated to. I need to know where you think you cashed in. You're, a, you're an average person. I'm amazing. We ain't on the same level. If we're in a club, I'm not asking you to dance. I don't need a man, I'm independent. Yeah, you're real independent, we know. We know this type right here. I don't need a man, I'm independent. Until there's a house fire. Until you're lost and the GPS doesn't work. I don't need a man, I'm independent. Drizzle, drizzle. We're in our soft guy era. I don't need a man, I'm independent. How'd you get there, Kelly? Who were the men that you associated with that you said you don't need them anymore? Let's be real. <clears throat> you associate with men you don't need. Let me tell you what happens when you come across a real provider, a real protector, a real pleaser. That's right, grown ass men do the three Ps. Provide, protect, and please. Provide, protect, and please. If you don't need a man to do any of those things, you ain't messing with a real man. Don't put it on me. The men you associate with ain't shit. The men you associate with, aren't. you don't need them. Don't step to me. Let me tell you something. You need me. There ain't a woman out there in my life saying, I don't need Rico. No, you don't do that all by yourself. Listen, you do enough to get by out of adversity you understand you don't do that all by yourself i got a woman i gave her a whole new life i got a woman don't need to work i got a woman she don't have a need in the world i got a woman and in four months paid off everything she had in life moved made her quit her job and moved states and come live with me i got you you ain't never met a man like me you met a man trying to get you a new, a, a, a fucking set of flowers, bro. I'm buying my girl a fucking backyard to plant flowers. Huge difference. You met a dude trying to give you a new bag. I'm giving my girl a new life. You don't know. You, I don't need a man. You don't need those men. Find a man you do need. 
Find a man that's so great, you put yourself on the back burner and say, yo, I trust him. I want to be with him. Oh, we could talk about it. No, thanks. That's what I said to you when you first came in this chat. You came into my chat and I said, no, thanks. We don't know each other. We don't cross paths. You're not an option. Have you seen Kim? Y'all want to know if I'm a hunter. You want to know if I got gift of gab, if I got game. Have you seen my girl? <sighs> you ain't got no business talking to me. It's a real problem out here. Hey, now that everybody's here, shout out to Lewis Hampton. Roll Tide Roll. Show us a pick. Step off, Kobe, before I put you in a helicopter. Listen to me. <laughs> Keep this energy during the fight. Go to DraftKings. We need people in the competition. We're sitting at 20 entrants right now. We need 50. So we need 30 more people. We got about an hour and 21 minutes. We need 30 people. We need a person every four minutes right now. We need a person every four minutes right now. Where did you serve, Rico? Where did I serve in the United States Army? I, in, in the United States Army. I'm a retired first sergeant. Where didn't I serve? I served over 20 years while we were at war. Where didn't I serve? It's bananas, bro. I actually was a traveling cyber expert uh, my last 10 years, so I went to every single base. Who's my, my current favorite MMA fighter? Michael Chandler. How'd she get big guy to this point? She's walked in and said, hello. She triggered me, Jeff. You guys don't understand. Africans use my pictures online all the time. Let me show you guys something. If you're watching on YouTube right now, you can see this. You go to Google, all the guys watching on YouTube, check this out. You go to Google and you search Rico, Rico, US Army love scams. And then you go click on images and all you're gonna see are pictures of me. Back in the day, all you're gonna see are a bunch of pictures of me. And these are the dating apps. These are the fake profiles they use to pretend they're me. So these guys, these African dudes, they make fake accounts and they use a different name, but it's all my pictures. Look at that, my, my daughter right here, she's an adult, bro. She's in college with a job, graduated high school. Like That's an adult right there. But they use old photos of me, make dating profiles, and then these women fall for it. These women fall for it, and then they show up in the chat, and they're like, hi, do you remember me? No, I don't remember you. I don't sleep long enough to have nightmares. I don't even sleep, bro. I just wait. I just wait for the next day. No, I don't remember you. I'll be like, yo, what do you do for a living? She's like, well, I have a shift at Cirque. Okay. Okay. Let me explain something to you, y'all. When you want to date a woman and you want a better life, you have to draw a hard line in the sand, hard line in the sand and say, I'm not messing with you. I'm going to explain this to you guys, how I learned this firsthand. I moved to Georgia. I got on dating apps. And I got on Tinder and Bumble and OkCupid and POF. And I was single and I'm making six figures. I'm in the army. I'm a senior enlisted member. I've been in the army about 15 years at that time. And uh, <clears throat> I make good money. I got health care, got life insurance. I got dental. I could take care of anybody. I got it, man. $100,000 plus. And I work all day. I'm a good man. I get home. I check my dating app. I got my profile pickup. I'm kind of, you know, I'm showing off the guns a little bit. I got them nice bathroom selfies. If you're on YouTube, you can see the pictures. If you're on YouTube, you can see the pictures right now. I, I'm taking, you see them shirtless photos back there. You see them shirtless photos. That's me, bro. That's me with the muscles. That's me with the smile and the dimples. So I go and I meet this girl and I, and I start finding girls and I don't care. I'm swiping right on anything that looks good tonight. I'm letting you know right now. I'm swiping right on anything that looks like Mackenzie Dern built like them big booty UFC fighter. I'm like, yo, she thicker than a snicker. That's me. And I got all these women lined up and I can remember 
One date, one date, one date, one date, because you ain't getting a second one. Because as soon as I meet you, I think to myself, I'm smashing and dashing. This girl ain't worth a damn. I ain't keeping her. I ain't keeping her. And I remember I went on a first date with this girl to, uh, I was in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. So I drove an hour, met her at Columbia, and we went on a walking date. You hear me? A walking date at the zoo. We showed up at the zoo. And the whole time, I just want to show her this snake. The whole time, I just want to go, yo, where are we going? Where are we going? And we're walking around at the zoo. I'm talking. I'm trying to be charismatic and stuff. She is so thick, so beautiful. And she wore wedges. I can't stand wedges, y'all. I can't stand wedges. And she's wearing wedges. And that thing, look, that walk was so nice. And it looked so mean at the same time. And I remember she said, hey, we're only going to be walking for two hours and then we'll go our separate ways. And I just thought, yo, I got another date lined up that night anyways. And if it don't work out, I'm going to hit the strip club anyways because I'm going to get freebies up in here. $40 a song. I better be getting something. I'm straight. I'm good for the night. I don't care. So I said, yo, that's cool. Let's walk. We talk. We hit it off. She's gorgeous. Got my hand on the, on the small of her back. I'm not trying to disrespect her, but oh my God, I want everything, right? So we're walking and talking and everything is great. And shout out to Michelle, because that's her name. I'll put her on blast. Shout out to Michelle. She's so thick, so beautiful. Straight out of Blythewood, South Carolina. And I remember asking her, you know, what do you do? What, what is this? What is that? And remember, I'm looking for a partner in life. I've just been divorced for a couple years. I make six figures. And then when I start talking to her, I'm like, oh, okay, so you don't have your own place right now? She's like, no, I just broke up and I live with my parents right now. I'm like, oh, you live with your parents. She's 38. I'm 35. I'm like, you live with your parents? Okay, no problem. You fell on hard times. No problem. No problem. Oh, I got three kids. I ain't worried about it. <laughs> I ain't worried about it. It got to be good. Hey, somebody left it all in. That shit was amazing, right? And after we're done with the walking date and we get back to the car, I say, all right, goodbye. Boom. Kiss, whatever. Call it good. Straight. I'm going to leave. She's going to go to a barbecue at her friend's house. Her girlfriend is throwing a barbecue and she's going to leave. And I'm like, cool. Well, I, I bounce. As soon as I drive away, I get a text. Do, 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 do. She said, that was the best first date I've ever had. I said, <laughs> I said, uh, not me. I said, not mine. And she said, and she sent me a sad face. She's like, why would you say that? And I'm like, cause your clothes are still on. I've had many first dates that were one night stands. I had many first dates that were full body massages. I had many first dates that were just on and popping from the word go. This was cordial. How is that my best first date ever? It was cordial. I just found out you don't have a job. And you live at your parents' house and you got three kids from three different baby daddies. How is this the best first date ever? For me, is what I'm thinking. Because the caliber of person I associate with is so much higher. She's fine as hell, but I already know you're not getting my last name. You're not Mrs. Rico material. So I wasn't feeling the same way she was. And then she says, well, hey, my friend said you can come to the barbecue. Now I know she wants to show me off. I'm like, straight. I said, well, hey, listen, we just walked all day at the zoo. I need to shower. I was getting a hotel room and going to shower before my next date. <laughs> Real talk. I was going to shower before my next date. So I already had a hotel room. She didn't know that because I live an hour away. She figured I drove home, but I'm still in town. I said, I want to go to that barbecue, but. I don't want to go all sweaty. So let me take, let me get a hotel room shower and change. And then I'll go. She goes, Oh my God, you'll do all that. And I'm like, yeah, I make six figures. I can just decide to go to a hotel room tonight. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. Like, bro, we can just change what we're going to do today. That's what happens when you don't worry about money. Cause you got it. So I go and take a shower. I go to the barbecue. No, no, no. Oh shit. I forgot the most important part. She says, where's your hotel room? I say, uh, give her the address, Holiday Inn Express, because I'm a baller on a budget. She shows up to the hotel room when I'm in the shower. 
So I hear a knock on the door. I think it's room service. I'm like, oh, they're going to have to wait. She's still waiting. She's still waiting. I look. I answer the door with a towel on. Boom. And it's on and popping. And I get get them yams, right? So now it's straight. Now I'm like, oh, this is great. Girl know what she's doing. We're here, bro. Now I know why she got these three kids. This is great. And this is the very first day I meet this girl. I already know her decision making is not that of a wife. I already know her decision making is not what I want. But I don't care. So I go to the barbecue with her to her friend's house. And I'm mingling with everybody. And I meet her kids day one I meet her kids day one what I don't care she ain't Mrs. Rico I don't care what up how you doing shaking hands meeting people kids are adult like she had one kid her daughter was 18 or 19 years old fine she had a son, he was 17, and then another daughter was 12. I'm sitting there like, yo, I'm 35. I just inherited these three kids. It is what it is. So uh, a month goes by of us dating. And at some point, I find out she had a job at J.C. Penney's photo lab. Bro, J.C. Penney's ain't in business. You don't have a job. She goes, no, that used to be my job, but I don't work there anymore. I said, so what do you do? Well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of doing this. I'm making this and I'm selling these things. No, 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 no. So she can't pay her bills. Her daughter wants to go to uh, Augusta Tech, some shit. I live in Augusta. It's an hour away. I just bought my house. I just bought a house because that's what real men do is provide and have a house. You know what I'm saying? If you're a grown ass man, you got a king size bed, even if you got nobody else with you. If you got a queen size bed, don't don't tell me you grown. Okay? And if you got a full size bed, you're childish. You got a twin size bed, move back in with your parents. I'm telling you, I'm sitting there, I got my own house, and I tell her, "Well, you guys can move in." Hey, <laughs> listen to what I'm saying. You guys can move in, no problem. You know why? Cuz I own the house, I can pay all my own bills, and I don't give a shit. If it's going to work out or not. (laughs) Because I don't need no man. Remember that? Remember that girl? Remember that girl talking? That started all this? Because I don't need no man. I'm telling you, I was walking around going, I don't need no woman. But it's because I was associating with a lower caliber of woman. I was associating with a woman who can't help me build shit. I was associating with a woman who's been ran through. Who makes poor decisions. The caliber, the life of trajectory I was on at that time was not where I'm at now. I was flatlined and I was happy with it. People need to understand. When she moved in, it was 4th of July weekend. One day she moves in all her kids and all their stuff. And then we go to the park. We go to Evans Park. This is a city nearby. Huge ass park. Why did you let her move in if she didn't meet your standards? Be- Kobe, because simplicity and convenience is everything. People stay together out of convenience. Remember, fear drives your decisions and you label it with practicality. The practical thing to say is, listen to what I'm saying. The practical thing to say is, I moved her in because I was tired of driving an hour. I moved her in because her kids needed somewhere to stay and I'm a good man. I can label it with practicality all day. But the real reason I moved her in is because I was afraid of losing a piece of ass. The real reason I moved her in is because it's easier to come home and smash instead of having to drive an hour. Okay? There are a lot of people right now married and the only reason they're married is the practicality they label the, the, the marriage with. We're married because... We're married because we just bought a house. Oh, I'm going to stay with him. We just bought a house. Oh, I'm going to stay with him because we have kids together. I got to live near him. I know we broke up, but I got to live near him because we're co-parenting. Oh, I got to live near him because we got to stay together because of church, because I'm afraid what my parents will think, because I don't know if I'm going to... Dude, stop it. All that... You don't know what people are going to think about it. You're not sure you can make it, and you're afraid of what your parents are going to think. It's out of fear. Out of fear. It's why you don't quit your job. It's why people re-enlist in the army. It's why... No, it... 
It didn't work. We went to the park that day after living with me for one day. We went to the park and I went to go buy her these big ass pineapple drinks. You buy them from the food trucks, like a big pina colada. And I went to go buy her the drink. And when I went to buy her the drink, I brought it back. And as I was walking back over to her, she was bent over. And remember, so thick. She was bent over filling out a waiver form so her kids could get on some ride like a carnival ride. She's bent over. She got cleavage hanging out, ass out for days. And there was these three dudes just sitting on a bale of hay, just staring like this, just just posted up staring. Three dudes locked in. So I walked over to her. We've been dating about a month. I whisper in her ear and I say, hey babe, stand up. There's a bunch of dudes watching you right now. She looked at me and goes, don't tell me what to do. She had no idea that I was coming from a place of sincerity. She had no idea that I was trying to tell her what the standards are if you want a life with me. And what I mean by that is you won't ever have to work again. I'll provide for you till the fucking moon comes up. I will take care of you and your children and give you a home as long as you protect what's mine and you represent me in a way that I can be proud of. So in this very moment, I'm the eyes behind the back of her head, and I say, stand up, babe. These guys are all just locked in on you. She looks at me and says, don't tell me what to do. I said, hey, hey, hey. I said, don't, don't snap at me like that. I said, we're in public. I'm trying to take care of you. Just stand up. And she said, get the F out of my face, and started wilding out. What? Started screaming out, don't tell me what to do. Ain't no man going to run me. I don't need this. Da, da, da. Started wilding out. I literally just started walking away. I started walking away. I just started walking away. And she was yelling. And I walked straight to my car. I ain't got time to talk to her. I walked straight to my Malibu and put that thing in reverse. I'm out of here. Yes, she's stranded with her three kids. I don't care. You just disrespected me. You just disrespect me. So now she's running into the street in front of my car saying, don't leave us. Don't leave us. Oh, now you're apologetic. Now you're sorry. So she gets in the car and she says immediately, she says, nobody say anything. Let's just get home. And I'm driving and I'm thinking, nah, <laughs> nah, ain't no piece of ass worth this. No, not in a million years. I don't care how beautiful she is. And she was finer than you'll ever imagine. She was gorgeous. And I just thought to myself, nah, nope, not doing it. And I drove home. And when I got home, her 17 year old son slammed my door, the back passenger door, slammed it shut and just looked at me. And I thought to myself, what is he doing? I, I'm, a, I'm a physical force, guys. I'm a monster. You, what are you doing? So I said, hey, do me a favor. I said, you, you're not allowed in my house. I said, all of you guys have one hour to pack your shit and get out of my life. She's like, where are we going to go? I just told my parents I can't live with them anymore. Da, 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 da. I don't care. And when she drove away, guys, <laughs> when she drove away, I said, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to change my mindset. I want you guys to understand from that day forward, I would no longer associate with a particular type of person, with a certain demographic, with a certain set of standards. And once I drew the line in the sand and said, I will no longer date those types of people. I will no longer do this. I changed my life. I didn't give a shit. I stopped associating with women with part-time jobs. I stopped associating with women with cars in the shop. I stopped associating with women who had kids, who had baby daddy issues or co-parenting. I stopped associating with anybody who doesn't check all my boxes. Don't give a shit. Don't care. Bro, within six months, I was dating my wife, who was making over $100,000. I lived in a 5,000 square or 3,000 square foot house. I was driving a $50,000 truck. 
I changed my whole life. I got promoted twice at work, finished my college degree, started going just straight up. So now I don't even evaluate a woman's beauty without knowing everything about them. I don't even evaluate a woman's beauty without knowing. So like, like, listen to what I'm saying. Rico, who's the finest girl? Uh, what about Kim Kardashian? Is she fine? No, 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 no. If you don't meet my standards of conduct, you don't even get evaluated. You don't even get evaluated. I don't give a shit. Meet my standards of conduct. Hey, so uh, if I told you not to bend over in public, what would you do? Well, it all depends. No, it doesn't depend on shit. Get out. Hey, um, so I was thinking, what have you been doing with, with, with your life as an adult? <laughs> like, what are, what are your goals? I need to know why you live in this city. I need to know what your goals are. Where do you want to live? Like, I need to know everything. You guys, somebody wrote in there, what does Kim do? Because obviously I have a significant other. I have Kim. Bro, Kim quit her job that she had for 20 years or 10 years. Kim quit her job and immediately moved to Georgia to be with me. I want you guys to think about a woman in this world that is willing to drop everything and move to be with you. You ain't shit. You ain't shit, buddy. I bet you can't find a girl to drop everything to come be with you and then start working for you and then start grinding with you every single day to make a life better for you. I got more money now than I've ever had in my whole life. Kim's the reason why. I got more success, less stress. Kim's the reason why. Hadn't been to California in 20 years. Finally went to go visit, took Kim with me. Take her all around the world. Ain't nobody beating Kim. And the reason they're not beating Kim is because she understands my mindset and there ain't a fucking thing wrong with that woman. There ain't a flaw in the world when it comes to her way of thinking, to her approach. That's real. I don't give a shit how big your ass is or how big your tits are, or how cute your face is. I don't care how much money you make anymore. I don't even care. I don't evaluate nobody like that. That part of my life is gone. That part of my life is done. Like I don't have to waste any cycles on it. I don't have to waste any energy trying to find my significant other. I don't have to juggle cell phone numbers and high text messages and DMs. I don't have to live that life. So when I'm sitting here immersed in UFC 300 and talking fights and a woman jumps in the chat and goes, Hey, do you remember me? No. Not only do I not remember you, I'll never know you. That part of my life is over there, bro. I got so much ass in my life, like, so much. I've been with so many women in my life. I can't name at least a hundred of them. No clue. It's like big booty at the club, uh, fine ass girl at El Paso. Da, da, da. Like I've been with hundreds and hundreds of women and a girl comes in and says, you know me? No, not even a little bit. And I don't want to know you. I'll never know you. And anybody in here saying cap, you've never lived the life of a successful person. You've never lived the life of somebody who's the best dancer in the club. You've never lived the life of somebody over six feet tall with muscles and money. You've never lived the life with somebody who's hilarious with the gift of gap. You don't know what it is. You can't relate. You ever been to the club? The guy saying cap, they probably never been to a club. But if you ever go to the club and you see one dude with all the girls hanging over him and you ever think to yourself, damn, I wish I was him. That's me, motherfucker. That's me. I'm the one that has a whole bachelorette party rubbing on me saying, we'll take you back to the hotel. Can you come dance for us? We'll take you back to the hotel. Oh, here's my number. My girlfriend wanted, wanted to get your number, but I, I wanted it too. You guys haven't lived my life. I went on a seven day cruise and won the dance contest every night. I went on a seven day cruise to the Bahamas and won a dance contest every single night. A different girl every night. Austin, cap. You ain't even been on a cruise, Austin. You ain't even been on a boat, motherfucker. You ain't never been on a cruise. You can't talk to me. We different levels. We're, 
You guys are gross. You guys are gross. I'm going to go to the chat now. Shout out to Connor. Says, one story Rico told that I will never forget for is the extreme entertainment was the one where he gave Alan Williams was fired. He gave after Alan Williams was fired. It had to do with a young fat dude having a child corn in the army. Great storyteller. Thank you so much. I remember every last detail he gave. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, Alan Williams, defense coordinator from the Bears, getting fired. And I talked about a story about a kid. Uh, his name was uh, Lovejoy. Last name Lovejoy. Uh, in the army. Obviously, I have a ton of army stories. I was in the army for the better part of my adult life, 21 years. And in the army, we had this thing where we uh, there was a dirty room in the barracks. There was a, a banana pill on the floor, left on the floor. And in the barracks, there's this dirty room. It's an apartment, a dorm room. And first sergeant comes to the formation and he says, this room is filthy. And he yells at the platoon sergeant, you better clean this shit up. You better make sure you don't let your guys go on leave with a dirty room, all this stuff. And at the time, I'm specialist Rico. I'm a young kid, maybe been in the army less than two years. Definitely less than two years. And uh, my, my platoon sergeant tells the squad leaders, go clean this room. Go figure it out. And we walk in there. We go to clean the room and it was covered, covered with pornography. So you was in the army 21 years and had hundreds of women. That is correct, Tavion. That was, and I was married the whole time, Tavion. Yes, cheated on my wife over 100 times oh, with over 100 women. I used to sleep with strippers on the regular, bro. That's a life of realness. That's the reality, dude. I would sleep with any girl in a club. I would sleep with any girl in the army. I would sleep with any girl on the beach. I would sleep with anybody, bro. I'd be going to New York for Puerto Rican Day Parade, Dominican Day Parade, everything. You just go out. There are certain people in this world that are hunters. There are certain people in this world that can get pussy, that can get girls, that can get ass. Like, you guys might be on dating apps and going, man, I really wish they would pick me. Motherfucker, I've created a dating app today I write a profile, put my pictures in, and the shit just blows. And now I got dates all week. There's not a moment in my adult life I've ever been alone. Not a moment in my adult life I've ever been lonely. Nope, can't relate. Been getting laid since I was 14 years old. 1997, October 8th, 1997, I started banging. Got my girlfriend pregnant. October 8th, 1990, I'm gifted, bro. I'm blessed. I ain't insecure about a damn thing. You guys are probably 14, 15, looking at yourself like, damn, I wish I would grow. Not me, bro. I've been a grown man the whole time. Shout out to my genetic background. I'm walking around 7% African. Don't mess with me. And I go out there and I just start smashing. I never stop. It's the reality of the situation. I'm letting you know. Has this guy gone over UFC 14, UFC 300? Yes, I have. Hey, by the way, there's 100 people in here. Shout out to the people on TikTok watching as well or uh, YouTube. We need you guys to sign up for the DFS competition. Find the link on the Twitter, the YouTube, the uh, Discord server. We're looking for people to sign up for DFS, Daily Fantasy Sports on DraftKings. We have a competition. We need 50 people. We're currently sitting at 21. We have 21 people. We need 29 more. Let's go. We got 53 minutes to get there. We need one every three minutes. I don't know if we're going to make it. Back to what I was saying. When you change the trajectory of your life and you change the people you associate with, your life will become so much better. And I need people to understand this. When you, that's why you single. Sandy, ain't nobody single, Sandy. Ain't nobody single. And if I was single, it would be by choice. And because I have over $100,000 in the bank, it would be because I'm debt free. I live a whole life that I decide what happens. You guys, no, ain't no woman pressing me. I'm not, I'm not single because I did something wrong. I'm not, dude, you don't know, Sandy. Nope. Sandy, I bet you've been turned down a hundred times over. Looking at that fake ass profile pic. I can't relate. In a room full of people, I'm the guy. Don't matter. Been like that since the jump. Been, um, go find the pictures. Go find the picture. All the pictures exist. All the videos exist. I've been dancing online for well over 12 years now. Simple. Check your dating apps. They, they use my pictures on dating apps. On catfish accounts, they use my pictures. People catfish other people using my pics. I just showed it on YouTube. You guys, you guys have no clue. 
So look, here's what I'm saying. Damn, I wish I would grow. These dudes look down when they're taking a piss. They look down in disappointment, bro. They're just, they're just disappointed. It don't matter what they piss on. They're just disappointed. They go out behind a tree and just get disappointed. If you're on Patreon and you're a free member, that's cool. Please go down to the link and join the DFS competition. It is a $10 buy-in. We need 50 people. We need 29 more. $10 buy-in to win $135. You got a chance to win, y'all. That's all there is. They sit down to piss. They sit backwards, bro. They straddle the toilet. They straddle it. Rico, brother, what did you... Did dude say to you deserve that roasting? A girl said it, Andrew. A girl said, hello, do you remember me? A girl said, hello, do you remember me? The real question is, do you remember me? Because I got zero chance of remembering your ass. I've been with so many women, I don't remember you. Are you the one that smelled like fish? Are you the one I walked out of the room as soon as I smelled the tuna? Is that you? <laughs> Go shower. I'm gonna tell you guys a true story, man. In Germany, we used okay Cupid. And I met this girl, she was a, a lawyer, she was an attorney. I met her for Mexican, we went to a Mexican restaurant in Germany, by the way. The most disgusting food in Germany is a Mexican restaurant. There is nothing good about it. It was generic as hell. It was terrible. I grew up in Southern California. I'm a Mexican man. This was the worst food I had. So I, and she's an attorney. She speaks five different languages. She's beautiful. I'm like, yo, she's like, hey, I know this is just a hookup. I don't want nothing serious. I know, understand your, because I was only in Germany for like three months. I only had three months left. Uh, I, I go there on three month, six month rotations doing cyber missions. So I was there talking to this girl. And so we go to dinner and after dinner, I'm like, what do you guys want to do? And, or what do you want to do? And she goes, well, I don't want to go to a hotel. They have this stigma about going to a hotel and looking like a one night stand. So she wants to hook up in the backseat of her car. And I didn't have a car in Germany. I was riding trains and getting rides. So she says, just go to, let's go to my car. And so she found a dark alley and parked in there. And then she starts going to town all right i'm like yo this works her throat game was whack i'm like ah, oh, i ain't gonna bust like this this is terrible she's a child this is this is terrible this is a waste, waste of my time right now she got no brain so i'm like hey um there ain't enough room back here let's uh let's go get it because she had a little car i said let's go get a, a room i could pay for a room she's like i don't want to go in there with you so i'm like don't worry i'll go to the counter i'll get the room you can just meet me at the room so we go to the room y'all and I, I mean they don't waste any space they're really small and it was like a little bed and it was a tv and all it was a little little i, I want to call it a hostel it was like a hostel and i lay her down on the bed and as i'm taking off her clothes she's wearing like one of these spaghetti strap tops i'm taking off the clothes she had to lift her arms up to t let the shirt go off and i promise you all I could smell was onions, bro. All I could smell was B.O. It wasn't like her, her vajayjay didn't smell. It was B.O. It was a natural body odor scent of B.O. And I was like, what is this? So I said, hey, um, do you guys, and I, you guys, you guys got to know me, man. You got to know me. I don't hold back. I said, hey, do you guys not use deodorant? That, just like that. Do you guys not use deodorant? And she says, in my country, we don't have uh, like uh, extra things. We don't have deodorant. So she doesn't use deodorant. She goes, I don't need it. I don't need it. I just use soap and water. I don't need deodorant. And I, uh, she goes, it's not natural anyways. And she started giggling like she thought it was cool. And I said, hell no. I picked up this girl, <laughs> picked her up and carried her to the shower grabbed a bar of soap they didn't have the the little body wash grabbed a bar of soap and just started scrubbing her arm <laughs> I, I started washing this girl <laughs> true story true story started washing her <laughs> killed the whole mood i want nothing to do with her i could i said i'm not gonna get to completion like this <laughs> i said hey just take me back to my room i'm good we left the hotel room. She took me back to my room where I lived. She gave me a ride back, and I said, I'm good. I said, I'm good. She goes, what do you mean you're good? I said, nah, I, I really am not. I'm not in the mood. <laughs> True story. 
True story, bro. I'm just letting y'all know. Um, I didn't finish. I said the job was not getting done. I'm just letting you. <laughs> ah, that's a true story. How are you guys feeling? Hey, just another announcement to everybody who's here. If you can go on DraftKings, we're on DraftKings Fantasy, Daily Fantasy on DraftKings. If you can please do it, go on your desktop. It is a $10 buy in. We're trying to let you win $100. Daily Fantasy DraftKings. Go to Daily Fantasy on DraftKings. You go look. It's ten dollars to buy in. We need fifty people by the time the fights start in forty-five minutes, right? That's a mission I didn't want to complete. Yeah, it wasn't mission essential. Just remember, if you guys don't believe me, these are all the pictures the scammers are using to trick these women. These are all my old pictures they're using. All the fake accounts. Scammer alert! Adrian Rico. They all these girls falling for this shit. They think this is me. I mean, it is me, but I ain't the one talking to you. <clears throat> I ain't sending you shit. These are old photos. Stop falling for it. They keep falling for it, bro. They keep falling for it. These girls are gross. Oh, but Rico, I love you. Oh, Rico, you're the best. I love you. Look at all these fake accounts. You guys falling for this shit, bro? Dude, just copying me? You, do you ladies think this is real? I'm in love with a guy named Rico. I found him online. Dude, stop it, bro. Rico was testifying at Congress on one of those things. <laughs> ah. Yes, I got receipts. This is all real. Everything I'm telling you is a true story. Everything I'm telling you is real. Tavion, you guys are children. You get nervous to talk to, you know, your crush. You still get nervous around pussy, bro. Like, I, we can't relate. I don't get nervous to talk to women. I, I'm, I'm a monster. I would want to be you, Unc. I would want to be you too. Yeah, I was fine as hell. I mean, I mean, I still am very good looking. The kids say, "Oh, he's out of shape." He's in them. No, I'm not. Come see me, bro. Come meet me. I meet followers all the time. Out in the public, like out in stores, I meet followers all the time. What do they say? Hello, Mr. Rico. Hey, Rico knows how you doing, man. Big fan. They shake my hand. They, they, they look up to me because I'm taller than them cats. I'm big. I ain't. They, you guys messing with the wrong one, man. I'm trying to tell you. We're still waiting on everybody to sign up. So UFC 300 coming up. Anybody asking me my per, my predictions? I live in Georgia. Listen to me. I've already given out all my predictions on the Discord server. Go to the Discord server. Find the free videos. They're listed there. Go to the YouTube. Find the free videos. They're there. I've broken it down. I even did a podcast fr Friday morning, yesterday morning, talking about the matchups. I gave additional input on every single matchup. I didn't give out my picks for free other than three of them. But you guys, come to the Discord server. Come to the Daily Fantasy Sports uh, DraftKings competition. We have 43 minutes to find 29 more people. We're gonna be, it's gonna come down to the wire, or you get your money back. But we're gonna pay out the top five people. Top five people win over 100 bucks, or at least the top two do. Uh, the rest of you guys are there. Rico, what do you think about the Dak Prescott situation with the charges being dropped? I think it's really hard to prove sexual assault, and charges always get dropped. That's just the reality of the situation. That was wild. What are your thoughts on Varsity JV film? Uh, I'd rather never see JV film. You guys got to understand something, man. I played freshman in JV. Yeah, thank you, JT. I hope you would be here on that. I never show anyone my freshman or JV highlights and brag about them. We were undefeated. We never lost the game for two years. And then we got to Varsity and we were CIF semifinalists. And then we won two CIF championships the, the two years that I left after I, I graduated. So for four years there, my high school was the elite of the elite. If you don't know what a CIF championship is in California, it's a really big deal. Well, you beating up on people who aren't as good as you. Don't send me film of you beating up on people who will never play on Saturday. Don't send me film of you beating a 120-pound corner. <clears throat> Those kids are not it, bro. Those kids are not it. Thoughts on Iran? I have none. I'm not concerned with Iran. West Coast football is no joke. That's where I grew up. I grew up in Southern California, Southern section, Inland Empire, Riverside County. That's where I grew up. So, yes, I know the height and the pinnacle of sports competition. I know how difficult it can be. Um, is Rico still with Kim? Diego Hernandez asked. Dude, Kim is still with me. Get it right. Kim follows my lead. She found a man so great that I will lead her through life. Remember that lady in chat that was like, I don't need a man. I'm independent. What you need to do is find somebody so great. You look at them and say, I need him. That's how I know you ain't messing with people. That's how I know you ain't messing with shit. You need to find somebody that, that makes you go, damn, I need that person. 
I need Kim. Kim makes my life better. She does, she cooks everything in this house. She cleans everything in this house. Let me tell you something. I gave Kim a house to clean. I gave her bacon to cook. I pay all the bills. I take care of everything. She keeps everything together. Right? I make ends meet. She ties them together. I give her the house. She cleans it. I, hey, dude, I gave Kim a backyard. She cuts the grass. I kid you not. I don't cut the grass. I'll be in here making videos while she's cutting the grass. She understands her purpose. Her purpose is to help complement my life and make it easier and better. It's the only reason I put her in my life. And Rico, people will be like, man, what are you talking about? What about equality and all this shit? Bro, she understands her role, and we both understand our roles in life. There's nothing equal about the way we provide for this family. There's nothing equal about the money I pay and the, and the bills I pay. There's nothing equal about what I provide. I wouldn't expect a woman to be able to make what I make. What, what is a woman? How's a woman? Be humble, though. Be humble, though, she said. Woman, listen. Humble, fake humble is the ugliest thing you can be. What the fuck I got to be humble for? I come from the gutter. I come from nothing. I come from two parents who didn't graduate high school. I just told you I got my girlfriend pregnant in high school. I've been making mistakes since I was 14 years old. What the fuck I got to be humble for? I retired from the military after 21 years and was a master sergeant in E8. Do you know the astronomical odds it takes to come from uh, teenage parents who didn't graduate high school, four kids? No, he's not coaching Little Rajas anymore. But shout out to you, man. My dad's doing great. Do you know the astronomical odds it takes to come from where I come from to start making over $300,000 a year? You don't know what this takes right here. You don't know how hard this is. I got, man, this is fucking crazy, bro. Join the military. Let me know what rank you get to Bef politics before you say that shit's dumb. I'm out of here. It doesn't pay anything. Let me know when you can create a second career after you finish the first one. Let me know when you can turn a 2.2 GPA in high school into a 3.96 magna cum laude college degree. Let me know. Let me know when you can just start talking into your iPhone to a hundred people and turn that into a fucking career. Be humble. I make it when I'm sleeping, bro. I wake up, I make a thousand dollars a day. And I don't spend none of it. I wake up the next day and make another thousand. I grind like I haven't made it. I got accountants telling me, Rico, slow down. I got agents telling me, Rico, sign this, saying that. Bro, I don't give a shit. You guys think I'm playing? <phone rings> on the phone with my agent. You guys think hey, I'm playing? Rico. Hey, Chris, what's, what's going, going on, man? Uh, Hanging in there to start my morning, morning about, about to get, get uh, you know, situated for the day. day. So, uh, so, so I wanted, I wanted to, to kind of pick your brain about, um, you know, just some, some deliverables regarding project picks. Um, I wanted to sort of see what you're comfortable with as you kind of hear off the top of proposing the stuff in the year. Um, so we're going to look at the fall. Right, right, look at college, college football season. season. Let's, Let's say Cry Pitts comes on board. board. What, you know, you know I don't want to give you any advice. How do you think you would integrate a brand like Cry Pitts, the Daily Fantasy Company, into, I guess, your content? Uh, well, I talk to what, 2,500 gamblers a day on my premium content, and then obviously, however many follow me on TikTok, Twitter, and uh, YouTube. Uh, approximately to, to over 200,000 people. Um, so some of the things, things I like to do, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm trying, trying to do right now, now doing a DraftKings competition. And I talk with my agent all the time. Be humble, she says. Be humble. You don't know what the fuck I'm doing. 
Hey, hey Marcus. Marcus. Yeah, how's it going, man? It's, it's cool. cool. What's, what's, bro? what's going on, bro? Hey, so uh, I just wanted to, 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 to run this by you and see if you wanted to get involved. Uh, if you've got something that you're not doing. We're going to start a uh, live radio show here in Salt Lake. And I was wondering if you wanted to contribute any, like, it would be Brief on those of the your own little plot. We're just trying to get some content. But would you want just audio of the stuff you're putting out to be included in the podcast? Yeah, yeah that doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. Because I didn't want to do it without your permission, but also, I mean, it's, it's valuable to us. I mean, I don't know if it's valuable to you, but, uh, you know, you got to the transfer world. It is a big thing, so. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. So, so I'll, I'll be doing, doing a lot of transport videos. videos. If, if you guys, guys wanted to grab something off my platforms and use them, it doesn't bother me. You don't even have to compensate me or anything like that. that. You, you feel, feel free to use them. them. All right, well, well there's definitely been people to use. So what I might ask you to do is send a quick recording of saying, hey, you know, make sure you follow me at this, 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 for, you know, to see my channel, my videos, or whatever. Sure. So listen, I cut these short. I talk to agents every day. I talk to program directors every day. I talk to radio stations every day. I talk to platforms. I fucking created this out of thin air. I created this by talking into my phone every day. Scroll up, KPL. Seen this coming a year ago. Thank you, JT. I talk to coaches every day. At the FBS level. I did this with my cell phone. I got my cell phone, started talking, and just kept talking, and just kept talking, until people listened, believed in me, started following me, and now people support my life. Just keep talking. Be accurate. TikTok doesn't see the videos. You TikTokers think you know what I make. I got 500 videos on Patreon you've never seen. I'm breaking down every college team in America. By position group, every single player. I got people signing up for Patreon that aren't even gamblers. Because they just want to see the in-depth analysis. They just want to see the fights. You guys don't know what you're fucking with. Like, for somebody to tell me, be humble... I want you to think of the astronomical odds it takes to be raised by two parents who didn't graduate from high school, who had four kids at the age of 20, who were a gardener and then got divorced and became a construction worker, sent me to some of the most poverty-stricken schools. College was never a topic. And my ticket out of there was to become an enlisted military member at a time of war. I enlisted in the Army April 1st, 2003. We invaded Iraq March 23rd, 2003. Eight days before I entered, I joined an Army war. You motherfuckers want to talk about a draft? I enlisted in an army at war, and I enlisted as a PV-2. I knew nothing. I didn't know the difference between an officer and enlisted. I didn't know there was college graduates. I didn't know. I thought I was going to play for the army football team. I'll never forget this shit. I went, and I went to school for a whole year when I joined the army. They moved me to military intelligence, gave me a top secret security clearance. Then I got an, uh, an engineering degree. And I thought, man, I just got this engineering degree from the army. I get to play for the Black Knights because I'm good enough. They need me. And then my, my first sergeant said, hey, Rico, football practice. I said, when is football practice? He said, after work today. I said, where? He said, it's down there across from the motor pool. There's going to be a team out there, football practice. I, I showed up. And one of the guys who was at that practice actually reached out to me on TikTok. Bro, it was flag football. It was the company team, Intramural Sports. I thought I was going to the fucking big time. I was so ignorant. I didn't even know. I didn't even know where West Point was. 
Like, I didn't understand. I thought I was going to ball. I'm going to show you something. And I still have my jersey. I was in the Black Knights 2005 at the hump, Camp Humphreys. I won the whole place. I was too good. I won the whole area. I won the whole peninsula. You know what, you know what they gave me my nickname was? The Truth. I was the Truth, that's my high school number. My teammates named me. I went out there and dominated everything. You were a football fan growing up. You were getting an engineering degree. And you thought all that. Cole Faulkner, you don't understand what it means to be ignorant. I was uninformed. I got an engineering degree from the military because it was my job to go to military intelligence classes. It was my job to sign up for college courses. They paid me to do it. And I was studying in boot camps so far. And I say boot camps, I mean like these eight week windows. So entrenched in learning electronic engineering, I didn't know what was going on in the world. I didn't know Carmelo Anthony won a national title at Syracuse. I was in it, bro. Focused. There was, this is 100% correct. We didn't know about the clearing house. We didn't know about the eligibility center. We didn't know how to get qualified for college. I had ignorant parents. They didn't know. They were uninformed. We didn't know this stuff. It wasn't common knowledge. So you join the military and I become an all army fighter. I become a world-class fighter. My unit said, yo, we're gonna send this guy to combat his courses. He's going to become a hand-to-hand -hand combat instructor. That motherfucker's an amazing athlete. I became the soldier of the year my very first year in the Army. Year 2004, got the trophy sitting right over fucking there. You know how you become the soldier of the year? You do nothing else in life but study the Army. I have such an analytical mind. I'm a fucking genius. But, if I do, but you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And the military did not care. All they did was put me in military intelligence courses and sent me to the NSA for the last decade. And then I decided, oh, you know what I didn't tell you? <laughs> you know what I didn't tell you before I enlisted in the army? I was a sports writer. I was a journalist for a newspaper. That's the truth. 18 years old, got hired at a newspaper to be a journalist. How? Because I'm a fucking genius. And shout out to Two Manny Socks. He actually knows my, of my father. My father is the greatest DJ of all time. And I probably could have been an, a remarkable DJ. My father is the best DJ I've ever known. And I've been to every club in America. My dad is the greatest. He used to win Battle of the DJ competitions. I remember growing up and seeing these little gold discs on a plaque where my dad won battle of the DJ competitions everywhere. Thank you, Manny. Thanks for knowing. The newspaper concept is wild because I wasn't a writer when I got hired. I was a box score. I was an agate clerk, so I was a box score uh, editor. I cleaned up box scores for people who were doing, because back then we used to do fantasy sports in the paper. We didn't have the internet. Fantasy sports, you would wake up the next morning and read all the box scores and add up all your points. So if you ran a fantasy league as the commissioner, you were tracking all the points in the box scores. Box scores needed to be accurate, cleaned up, edited, because I would grab them off the wire, which was this internet thing. The wire was created when I got to the wire, it was the internet. And we were downloading stories off the wire from writers anywhere in the, in the world and putting them in our newspaper. And then I eventually, because of a car accident and some other stuff, I've been on this story a long time, I eventually became a writer.
Hey, Rico, I'm graduating in college in 2020. I'm debating joining the Guard. What's your op? Uh, never join the National Guard. Never join the Reserves. Either be an active duty member or don't do it at all. Plain Guard, plain Reserves is not it. Nope. Because you're plain soldier and you're not really bought in and you don't live that life. And then when something starts popping and shit starts popping, you're going to get deployed and they're going to call you and expect you to live that life and you're not built for it. You'd be much more prepared as an active duty member. Shit pops off. You already lived that life. Trust me. The adjustment is not okay. My ex-wife used to be a National Guard. It didn't work out. You never want to do it. My sister was active duty National Guard, actually a retired first sergeant from National Guard. She was active duty for 18 years first. I don't recommend National Guard or reserves. Mm -mm. Go active duty, get everything paid for, come up with some type of enlistment plan. It's an amazing feeling. Thoughts on someone who's rebuilding their life and looking at the Army in the early 30s? Yeah, Joey, I can relate. Now, I had been in the Army the whole time, but rebuilding your, your life is something most people do in their 30s because life isn't isn't that you know when you get on the roller coaster and it tink 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 and you're going up you're going up you're going up you're going up that's not life life's not like this life comes at you in waves bro there's highs and lows there's highs and lows i used to rent a room off craigslist i used to rent a 10 by 10 room off craigslist i remember renting a room off craigslist and then sub renting that sub to somebody else for more money. I rented a room off Craigslist for $400 and then I let somebody else live in it for 500. Cause I had to find a way. So I started renting rooms off Craigslist for $400, $500. And I would just sell that room again to somebody else for an extra hundred bucks. That's what I would do. True story. Cause I had to make ends meet. I lived in an elderly lady's house. Lived with her. No social life. Had to go get, had to go, uh, I was smashing girls behind the club. I'm just letting you know. Some of us have been there. Some of us have done it. Shout out to Grave Digger. He just got his, his shit together. Grave Digger Frank. It's on Rico. Best lesson he ever gave IMO was to stop saying there's no good men and women out there in order to attract these high value people. You have to be one yourself. Yeah, Connor. Like, like I need people to understand this. People will write on dating apps and be like, good man. Where's where's this? And it's like, bro, who gives a shit where all the good men are? Who cares where all the good girls are? They're not interested in you. It doesn't matter if you find the man of your dreams. It doesn't matter if you find the woman of your dreams. You need to be the man of your like. You need to be the person they're looking for. You can find the woman of your dreams. It don't fucking matter. Not if she's not interested in you. You got to be great. Stop worrying about where all the good men at. Blah blah blah. No, go be a great person. You will attract what you're looking for. And then when you find what you're looking for, don't have any any rules like don't ever circumvent your standards don't ever sell yourself short i can remember uh i told a girl i was talking to this girl she's like rico i'm gonna go on a date da 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 should i should i be with this guy i said well how's the first date gonna go well i gotta go pick him up because his car's in the shop i said oh no yourself you are subjecting yourself to a life of you having to pay the bill you having to provide for this guy, his car's in the shop, he shouldn't be dating. He shouldn't be going on a date. He should have enough money to get a rental or he should have his car fixed. I don't want to hear it. I don't give a shit what circumstance he's in. His circumstance is not yours. Stop it. Oh, but he's a really nice guy. Well, let him be a nice guy for somebody else because you're about to have a substandard life. You know what? Matter of fact, no simple dates. You don't, you don't get to ask me, oh, do you want to go for coffee? Do you want to go for a walk? Do you want to? No, because you could do simple dates with anybody. Like if you're a woman out there right now and you're like, oh, I don't know who I want to. You can do simple dates with anybody. I could give, I could do fucking 10 cups of coffee and not give a shit about a single one of those people. But if I got to take a girl out for steak, I'm going to pick and choose the right one. And I can't do that again for at least three more weeks. 
That's the way you guys got to think, man. Like, oh, well, what if you just want to go get coffee to get to know you before you ever go? No more bullshit dates. No more substandard dates. Don't do it. You're subjecting yourself to a substandard life. You got to go ham, man. You, you got to be all in from the jump. I believe in full transparency. My password on everything is, is whatever, whatever Kim made it. You got in your 30s. I know my 20s were fun, but I want everything in the world. Let me tell you something. You ain't never been broke until you hit your 30s. Now, in your 30s, <laughs> I'm going to give you guys some wise advice. The older you get, the more expensive lessons will be. That's real. The older you get, the more expensive lessons will be. So when you're in your 30s and you start fucking up, just remember, it's going to be pricey. It's going to be pricey. Get, getting divorced, I've been divorced twice. First divorce, pff, it was cake, bro. It was okay. Second divorce, woo I remember cutting that check for 30000 I remember cutting that real check for $30,000 to my ex-wife and I had $37,000 to my name and the judge said hey if you want you're going to give her $30,000 but I'm giving you the house I said alright I'll take the house and I sold that for the net equity and my life is never I, I never looked back but the point is do you know what kind of pain that is bro <laughs> my first divorce the judge said, how much you giving her? Da, 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 da. We had it in mediation. We had it all there. I gave her $1,400 cash. That was half the checking account, bro. We had $2,800 in the bank. I'm 38 getting a divorce, and they're like, yo, how much you got? I'm going live for the fight. MVPs get to watch the fight with me on the Discord server. Get in where you fit in. If you're not an MVP, you're wasting your time. I'm about to stop my stream on YouTube. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you guys. We're trying to find people to sign up for the for the DraftKings competition. We need 50 people. We have approximately, uh, we'll, we'll set it to, uh, to 20 next time. We'll set it to 20 people. I did not get finessed. See you guys on the Discord server. I'm about to start setting up for it now. If you're on, um, if you're on the Discord server, you're about to see it. It's no big deal. You guys know the deal. Everybody knows. MVPs know what's up. MVPs know what's up.